this Saturday night, August 4th, in New York yeah. City. We are back at the crib. Gramercy Theater, yep. the world famous Gramercy Theater. Me and G Moody, whose last name rhymes with duty, live from New York City. Mr. New York plays New York. The three time podcast co host of the year, live from New York. Yeah. I cannot wait. Tickets are still available at IamRappaportTour.com. You know we're going to tear shit up. We tore shit up in Toronto. We are going to tear it up this Saturday, August 4th. We're meeting and greeting every single person that wants to meet and greet. We're taking selfies. We're shaking hands. We're kissing babies. Saturday, August 4th in New York City. What's up? This is Michael Rappaport. You are now listening to the I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast. I am so fucking proud of this episode. Live from Toronto, me and G Moody, a few days ago, went up there. We came, we saw, we conquered. The city was under duress, and we did our best to knock shit out of the park. I think this is one of our best live shows ever. You are now listening to the I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast live from Toronto. All new, everything. Miles, Jordan, start this motherfucker off with something nice, something real proper, with a real banger. It's the I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast from the T-Dot Toronto. Let's do it. All right, the I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast is proudly sponsored by Blue Chew. We appreciate Blue Chew supporting the I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast, the only chewable pill that will get your fuck style buck wild and have you going 15 rounds in the bedroom. Visit bluechew.com to get your first shipment. When you use the promo code LOAF, that's LOAF. Use the promo code LOAF, L-O-A-F. Just pay the $5 shipping. That's blue chew.com b-l-u-e-c-h-e-w.com the promo code is loaf certified sugar dicking that's bluechew.com the promo code is loaf the I am stereo podcast live you down with rap report yes I am So before we get into it, I just want to say, before we start talking shit, before we start delying out the sick fucks of the week, and before uh, uh, we do our official, first time official ever top five Canadian stickmen, before we do any of that, before we bring out guests, before we do any of that, we want to say that it is our honor to be here after what happened, not too far away from the Danforth Music Hall. No doubt, no doubt. 
It, it's our privilege to be here. So we, we are uh, excited to be here. Um, and, 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 you know, we want to try to give uh, uh, you guys the best show, give the city the best show, uh, despite the, the fact that the historical Danforth musical didn't have wireless mics so I could do our customary introduction for Moody as Danny Aiello. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I, I'm sure Aiello will come out at some point. Yeah. Other than that, we just want to say we, we, we're dedicating this show to everybody who was affected by what happened the other day. Yeah, yeah all the victims. And uh, in case you don't know it, this is the three-time podcast co-host of the year. The name is G. Moody. No the last name rhymes with... Hell yeah. And my name is Michael Rappaport, a.k.a. the Gringo Man Dingo, a.k.a. the Jake LaMotta of podcasting. <laughs> Am I forgetting, a.k.a. the Pusha T of podcasting? Yeah. Jeff Rulin. A.k.a. the Pusha T of podcasting. I know you guys are big Pusha T fans, and we're happy to be... <laughs> You guys love Pusha T in Toronto, right? So I just wanted to just acknowledge that before we get it, get it started with our non-show show. So yeah, so look at those, first, listen, 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 listen. listen. Money don't let, start it. Let me, let me tell you something. I mean, I, I just sat down, I'm gonna get up. Money don't start it. We could turn on the fucking Willie Hutch music and I could give you the Willie Hutch treatment. Nah, they don't want it. Don't give it to them. Nah, it's too early. They don't want it yet. We know because we've, we, we've learned, we've learned, because don't fucking start. Yeah. Is hey. it you with the, with the, uh, with, what, the, you got that UFC shirt on? Hell yeah. What was that UFC brand? <laughs> You got an afflicted t-shirt on, are you talking? Was it affliction? What was the name of that shit? Somebody made a boatload of money and then just left. So, yeah, I, I wanna say this. I, um, I had to actually usually come up in, in, in something similar to this, but with jeans. But I, I made an executive decision today to fly in shorts because I assumed it would be very hot. We flew from New York City. And as I was checking through, I, I paid like $139 a year for Clear and TSA this and all the shit. And I, I'm proud of it. And I you know, have all my codes and my numbers and I have it all. And I, I get to uh, uh, the, the TSA check through line and they say, take your toiletries out of your bag. I got to take those out. You know, you got to take the liquids out of your bag. I got to take those out. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm a grown man. I got a, an orange toiletry bag in my hand. I go through. The guy stops me. He, uh, I, I don't know who, if, if he has any idea that he was like dealing with an international hero. Yeah. They shouldn't have stopped your ass, man. No, they didn't. St they, I don't know. So he's going through my bag. I got my toiletries in one hand. Uh, I, got a, I got a coffee in the other hand. He, he unpacks the microphone. He unpacks different things. And this dumb fuck, <laughs> this dumb fuck forgot to repack my jeans. Oh. So there's some short TSA, fake prison break, Agent Don Self motherfucker <laughs> walking around with my jeans at LaGuardia Airport. Right. So I apologize. I do have great legs, and I know I have great calves. <laughs> Don't go that far, motherfucker. The calves are good. They're, they're, they're good, but they, they, they're not, they, like, they don't work, but they look good. <laughs> I can tell these, these, this, this crowd. Don't engage them. Don't engage them. Don't make eye contact. Look at me. If you look him in the eyes, they're gonna get us into a free for all. Yeah, that's why I sat down. Don't make fucking eye contact. I can tell this is a rowdy crowd. Look above these fucks. We like it. We like it though. We like it. We want a rowdy crowd. You guys deserve to be rowdy. Um, we're fans of Canada. Hell yeah. You know, you know how we feel 
about uh, Dick Stain Donald Trump. I wanted to get a temperature gauge on Dick Stain Doug Ford. Oh. <laughs> Uh, isn't that... That's the, that's the crackhead man? That's the crackhead's brother. Oh. Oh, he on that ooh-wee. Can you, can you imagine if, if, uh, if New York City... I mean, we got a lot of crazy shit in the United States. Right. We got a president who's fucking off the wall. Bananas. He's been with more porn stars than any porn star. This is true. But he's not on crack. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. the fact that, I mean, the great city of Toronto, everybody's so polite here. And you guys made it through an era with a crackhead. I yeah. mean, Washington, D.C. had the great Marion Barry. He was caught on tape doing crack, uh -huh. buying crack, yeah. and denied the shit. The bitch but the, me the, up. the late, to quote the great Marion Barry, the bitch set me up. I want to see this side of the crowd because I've been—I didn't give you guys any love. Yeah, go over there. Okay. You—you you would think after a music hall that's almost a hundred years old, you'd think they'd have cordless fucking mics. Yeah. <laughs> Dave Chappelle performed here. I'm sure there's like no. Yeah, nobody wait, wanted wait, yeah. a cordless mic. Step your game up. Nobody could have sprung for a cordless mic. We want you want to tie you down? You want to? <laughs> see, motherfuckers like your legs. You hear what they talking? <laughs> So I know a lot of you guys are probably basketball fans. Yeah. I heard some shit went down. Now, now I want to tell you something. Don't you fucking boo me. <laughs> okay? Because me, the ultimate LeBron hater, I had my fucking Toronto Raptors jersey and the stupid fucking dinosaur logo. Oh. I'm 48 years old. I was on the front lines cheering for the fucking Raptors, and I don't know what the fuck Dwayne Casey's thinking, let LeBron James bring the ball up full fucking court. It's Damn. like, he was like, he could get a fucking suntan, bring the ball up full court. Uh, it's like fucking Rock and Jock 1993, shooting shots, floating bank shots, three pointers. Game. Game. So I was on the front lines with it, but I want to tell you something. The Toronto Raptors fans, my first suggestion is this. I'm gonna tell you. Start acting like you belong. And when I say that, I mean, stop hanging outside the fucking arena during the games like a bunch of degenerates. Yeah. And yeah. I say this because you're acting like you haven't been there before. And that's why you don't win. I know it's cute. I know it's like, we're fans, Toronto. We, I get it. That was cute. I'm going to get to the Knicks, you fuck. <laughs> <Word. laughs> I'm going to get to the Knicks. Don't worry. <laughs> don't worry. I'm not going blind, motherfucker. I know. I'm a Knicks fan. This is why I can tell you that our history is your future, you yeah. fucks. I, I like that. I believe that. <laughs> now, number one, to be honest, because listen, you know, I am Rapport Serial Podcast. We talk the most shit, but we talk the most shit about ourselves. So I want to, you guys are fans. You came out because you like the show. I feel like you, you, you have a sense of who Moody is and who I am. Uh, you know who the, the n never heard from, but mo a lot of talked about Dust Brothers are. I want an I wanna honest poll here. Who has sat outside the arena during an entire Toronto Raptors game by a show of hands? Dang. Okay. Okay. Yeah, put the lights on these motherfuckers. Okay. Okay, turn the lights down. The shame is enough. <laughs> yeah. Don't do it again, you dumb fuck. Yeah. It ain't worth it, man. You gotta act like you've been there before. Get a fucking life. Go to an arcade. 
Watch the game at home. Standing outside the arena with that gung-ho, winging a prayer shit is not going to get you the fucking championship. Hell no. I'm telling you that from the bottom of my heart. <laughs> okay, and when you talk about the Knicks, we have suffered for 43 years. And what I have to tell you about the experience of suffering for 43 years is, get used to it, you fucks you. Yeah. <laughs> All right? They got Kawhi Leonard Get now. Get fucking used to it. You fucking traded an iconic player. They got Kawhi. You got Kawhi Leonard. Wait. You got Kawhi Leonard. They just added Ted Bundy to the locker room. <laughs> fucking Kawhi Leonard. Press conference in Braille. The first three years. <laughs> the first three years that he was in the league, he refused to do his fucking hair. <laughs> yeah, who, who? MVP of the finals. I love him. But I have to go on just what I see. He, I imagine he's just not the sharpest tool in the yeah. fucking shed. Yeah. Got to talk, man. At you got to speak up. If you see something, say something, Kawhi. <laughs> and we all saw it all fucking summer. You're the only one who didn't speak on it. Skip Bayless, G. Moody, mm -hmm. that fuck Bill Simmons, duck... <laughs> That donut-eating motherfucker, Dan Lebertard. Everybody talked. <laughs> everybody talked about. We heard from everybody all summer. Even even Demar after they traded him, pissed him away. Yep. Nothing from Kawhi Leonard. He comes up here. We don't hear anything. You gotta uh, ingratiate yourself to the city. Yeah. Get some fucking ice skates. <laughs> Get some jerk chicken. Do something, man. He smiled. Great. He, what did he say? What the, when, what when, the, he say? when the bar is, he what? smiled. When that's a big deal, you're in fucking trouble. Yeah. He smiled. He smiled. That's because the fucking guy pinched his ass at the yeah. press conference. He smiled. He smiled. That's not good. That's, that's not good. Yeah. That's like, that's like winning the MVP of the NBA Summer League. That's not something to brag <laughs> about. Yeah. What the fuck was that? Uh-oh. That's Kawhi right there. That's how he talk. Just bang shit. We love Kawhi. I wish you guys nothing but the fucking, the best of luck. I'm a Raptors fan. I was on your side. I rooted for you. But when you let the LeBron James walk up the court like he's in South Beach, Miami on a stroll. Yeah. Dwayne Casey got coach of the year for that. Dwayne Casey got coach of the year for getting swept. Yeah. Oh, Four games in a row. It's a regular season award. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Listen, did, 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 uh, again, the Knicks, we're not in any place to talk shit. We have an 18-year-old and the coach who I love, David Fisdale, he watched him play and he said, we have a basketball player who could pass, shoot, and dribble. I'm like, this is what the fucking standards are? Yeah. Yeah. I can fucking pass, shoot, yeah. and dribble. That tells you what type of so, season. So, so yeah, we, we know what he smiled means. We're excited about a guy who could pass, shoot, and dribble. <laughs> and they're happy that he smiled. He fucking big deal. Yeah. He, he smiles. He smiles. As he fucking, uh, the guy hasn't spoken in three years. Yeah. And you happy about getting this motherfucker? Yes. Don't engage him. I ain't fucking with him. Don't speak to them. I ain't got shit How was your say. flight? It's good. You good? Man, I had some good. Did you get some sleep? I'll just yeah. talk to you. Because yeah. we engage with the crowd and it turns fucking wacky. Hey, where's Oakley at? He may. What do you mean? You want to you want to you want to talk shit about Charles Oakley? Yeah. Yo, Oak. No, I'm just. Yeah. <laughs> we'll drag your ass out this day. <laughs> He might show up, motherfucker, and when, you, when he shows up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, these motherfuckers. <laughs> That's, the first. That's that ooh wee in there, man. <laughs> the K2 got motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> I heard they got that K2 up here. Yeah, imported. 
The motherfucker, man. It's called that Wayne Gretzky. <laughs> yeah. That Mario Lemieux. <laughs> John Tavares. Yeah. <laughs> you want to shout out John Tavares? Traded. Toronto homeboy. So here's another poll question I have for this audience. Be honest. Is Canadian football actually a thing? No? CFL's not popping? Have you ever heard breaking news on all the sports channels that a fucking ex-cokehead former Heisman Trophy guy (laughs) gets traded? I didn't even know they allowed trades in the CFL. Especially American motherfuckers. Do they allow trades in, Ma- in Madden? Like, do they? Do, can you do trades yeah. in Madden? Nah, they shipping his ass Even all his, over. Yeah, they ship fucking Johnny Manziel. He was up in some team, and they shipped him to another team. <laughs> to greener pastures four games into the season after not playing a snap. You fuck you. Yeah. That's what he get. That's what he get for talking shit about you. That's what the fuck he got. I just, I didn't know, because they always like, well, I'm going to go to Canada. I'm going to turn things around like Doug Flutie did. Yeah. Who else came Warren up here? Warren Moon came up here, yeah. showed his ass. It's like the fucking G League in Canada. <laughs> no disrespect to Canada. I love it up here. My brother's a, a professor at the University of Halifax. That's a fact. <laughs> professor Rappaport. Hell yeah. Straight scholar, man. <laughs> What happened to me? Uh, uh, tell you, I'm a boxer, B. <laughs> You're looking at two very distinguished failed products of the New York City public education system. Yeah. I know my deficiencies when it comes to, uh, you know, my IQ and this sort of thing. <laughs> this motherfucker's still in denial. Scholarship with me. Um, what else is going on? <laughs> We're going to have uh, Pascal. i fucking been practicing the pronunciation of his last name all day. Yeah. Siakam. Pascal. Thank you. I got held up. You saw that pause there. He's going to come up later on. Where we're, he's he's going to be Judge uh, Pascal because me and Moody have the long-standing argument which got refueled uh, because C.J. McCollum has his podcast, the, uh, what is it, Jordan? Pull Up. The Pull Up. Stay fucking in. Yeah, I like it. No, 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 don't engage. Don't, now you're engaging. Nobody oh, goes sorry, fucking sorry. nuts in sorry. here. Stop fucking with me, man. C.J. had uh, K.D. on his podcast, which is a big deal. Like when, when we get our guests like Pascal... Siakam <laughs> and Bubbles tonight. Straight. You know, we appreciate it. So I imagine CJ McCollum was very happy to have Kevin Durant, two time MVP on his team, world <laughs> champion, come into his, you know, his upstart podcast. And during the podcast, Ke- Kevin Durant told him the Portland Trailblazers ain't winning shit. Oh. To his fucking face. Yeah, talking talking greasy on my man podcast. Now, if Pascal Siakam came up here on the podcast and was like, Mike Rapp, you ain't shit, your breath stinks, G Moody, why the fuck you wearing a soccer shirt? You wouldn't know a soccer ball from a volleyball. (laughs) We would would start snapping on Pascal, even though his brothers are like fucking... You know, they're bigger than him. Yeah. But we would see CJ McCollum while Kevin Durant is laughing in his grill going, ha, 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 you guys ain't winning shit. CJ McCollum's up there going, well, we have the pieces. Yeah. He was trying to be political, and this guy dissing him on his podcast. But they're saying That's Kevin Durant up. is a snake. He's telling him to his face, you could post all the fucking workouts you want, CJ. You motherfuckers ain't winning shit. Oh. I'm letting you know to your grill. LeBron wouldn't do that. LeBron would have been like, oh, he'd have did some side-handed, underhand, backstabbing shit. No. And everybody's upset with Kevin Durant about this. CJ should have said, yeah, but you went to the motherfucking team that didn't need your ass. But he didn't say that. The point is is that. that. I would have said. 
But the point is, is that CJ, you got to control the fucking interview. Yeah. Yeah. You can't <laughs> let that shit get out of hand. The guy's laughing in your face. These are my guys that were in the bar at yeah, seven. Yeah, like, yeah in. no one's immune to injuries. What the fuck does that have to do with yeah. anything? <laughs> Woo. No one's immune to injuries. Keep going, man. <laughs> Don't pay attention, man. <laughs> All right, now before we bring up Pascal, Judge Pascal. Judge Pascal. Um, I wanted to wish one of the consummate worldwide stickmen, a happy 75th birthday to Mick Jagger. The great Mick Jagger who just had a kid at like 71. The guy's been laying it down yeah. since the early 60s worldwide coxman. Yeah. Fan, that needs no introduction. The resume speaks for himself. He's been skeeting for centuries. 75 years old, and yeah. he just had another kid. Damn, in kindergarten, you could be 200 taking her to school. <laughs> no problem with it. So in lieu of that, I am going to give you, before we bring out Pascal, and then we got to take an intermission, um, before we bring out Pascal, I am going to give you, and we went through this tooth and nail. I tried to keep it Toronto-based, but I couldn't do that. This is a great city, a great comedy country, the whole country. A lot of things come out of Toronto, but I couldn't put together a top five Toronto stick men. So what I did is the first ever official, official, you know we don't fact check, but we fact check this shit. Yeah. Top five Canadian stick men of all time. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Whoa. Burgess Meredith is not from Canada, you fuck you. It just, we know Burgess Meredith is a coxman. We know that he started the whole coxman community. Yeah, he's a charter member. What the fuck are you talking about? We know that. Are you on that brown? You want something? All right, coming in. He's young. He's hungry and he's doing the damn thing at number five. 2018, first ever top five Canadian stickmen. Young Skeeter. <laughs> Up and coming, Sean Mendez. Oh, yeah? See, the, the guys are like, oh, the girl's are like, ah. that's a great coxman. He's a young Skeeter. This is now, there's a difference between being an irresponsible fuck yep. and a coxman. Yeah. DiCaprio, Jeter. By the way, has anyone seen Derek Jeter lately? What the fuck happened to Jeter? What happened? First of all, he was better when he didn't talk. He's got a weird voice. He put on 20 pounds. He's got like a dent in the side of oh. his head. That's Thank the... God he got married because he, he just he fell off a cliff. That's the real Jeter. That's that he, he he's the Derek Rose of Stickman. He just <laughs> fell off a cliff. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Derek Rose of Stickman. Boom. That's good. Thank you. <laughs> Coming in at number four, the man who runs shit in and out of the bedroom, Justin Trudeau. Yeah. I like this fucking guy. Yeah. He's not like our pig president, Donald Trump, who's messy. His wife can't even make eye contact with him. <laughs> He's caught on tape saying all kind of greasy shit. Yeah. Justin Trudeau is a coxman. He stays out of the news. Stays out of the news and does what he does. That's the requirement. You know, it's not about being a scumbag. It's not about being, it's not about numbers. Yeah. It's a certain je ne sais quoi. There's an eloquence. You're never in the papers. Never in the papers. You, but you're still skeet. The great Leonardo DiCaprio comes up. They say that actors, successful actors, meet more people in a year than most people meet in a lifetime. Leonardo DiCaprio, the reason why he is not just the king of the world on the boat, but the king of all coxmen, is because you'd be hard-pressed to find anybody, man, woman, or child, that's got anything bad to say about him. There you go. Class. There you go. Eloquence. 
Just want to be clear, so you, yeah. this isn't a celebration of being an irresponsible scumbag. Yeah. <laughs> We've had some irresponsible scumbags on this podcast. Not naming names. <laughs> number three. Coming in at number three. Ryan Gosling. Oh, yeah. He's married, he had kids, but a great run. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, just like... He's kind of like the Barry Sanders of Coxman. Yeah. Short run, got out of the game while things were ahead. Could have kept going forever. Yep. Eva Mendez is praying to God that shit that he doesn't leave. Because if Ryan Gosling hits the streets again, it's over. Yeah, right. By the way, is Ryan Gosling from Toronto? What's with that fake New York accent? Yo, the, the lips. Oh. The... He's from yeah. here? He's from Canada. Oh. Coming in at number two. Top five, this is like Casey Kasem shit. Coming in at number two, <laughs> official, the great, and I, I wish him all the luck in the world. A lot of people have asked me, does he, does he, will he get on the list? Coming in at number two, Canadian's own, the Biebs, Justin Bieber. Fantastic work. Oh, I wish yeah. him all, luck, all the luck in the world. Yeah, yeah. And coming in at number one, you could love him, you can hate him. You can diss track him to the fucking ground. He's got an identity crisis. He's a fanboy. He's a groupie, but he puts it down. One of the biggest artists of all time, and definitely Canada's number one stick man, number one coxman of all time. Yeah. And I can't stand this motherfucker, Drake. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. All right. Numero uno. Listen, historically, you just witnessed, this is like a, a State of the Union address. That top five list, we've been working on it. Top five, oh, we did regional top five just for you guys. <laughs> All right, without further ado, from the Toronto Raptors, your guy, skills to pay the bills, 24 young doing his thing, Pascal. Yeah. Welcome to the stage, come on out, let's give it up. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. And he talks. All right, okay. Pascal, how you feeling? I'm good, man, how you doing? How's your summer been? Uh, amazing, you know, just working. Do you, have you been working out? Yeah, of course. What, do you post your workout videos? I don't have a problem with it. No, no. No, the reason, because it like, at first it was like cool, because like, yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. imagine if there was footage of Magic Johnson and Larry Bird and, you know, Isaiah Thomas, Zeke Thomas, right. and all the guys from our era, if they had those workout videos, it would be dope. Or Dominique right. Wilkins in the summertime. Like, you know, you see they're like Zapruder tape. But, but now it's become almost like, like, I'll see LeBron, which I know that's not a friendly word around you. Yeah. <laughs> and they're posting it, and they're like, oh, look at LeBron working hard. Motherfucker, right. you're supposed to be working hard. Right, right. That's what we expect you to do. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. I mean, yeah, and everybody's like, yo, he's ripped. He's LeBron James. Of course he's fucking ripped. Hell yeah. So do you post your workout videos? Yeah, sometimes. Is that, is that like, so has it become like a sort of a thing like, yo, you're posting them, like, because now guys are breaking each other's balls. Yeah. And um, For me, like, I think the main thing for me is like, I mean, you can post it if you want. If, if you don't want, you can't post it. The, the only thing that I have a problem with is if you're not working. If you're not working, that's the problem. Wait, as what do you mean? Oh, working, right, right. As long as you're working, you can post it. You don't have to post it. Just work. Okay. Right, right. Now, what is, so what is your summer going to be? You, you, you guys had a, uh, um, let's say, what's the word? I want to use the politically correct word. You had a, um, an abrupt exit from the playoffs. <laughs> yeah. When, when you go through that, like I just told you how much I respect your team and I was rooting for your team. When you guys go through that, how, how, does, how long does it take you? Right? You can't speak for everybody, but how long does it take you to go? Because obviously the expectations are, you know, we're going to win. Mm -hmm. You don't expect that. You don't plan for that. How, how, how hard, how long does it take for you to, like, sort of wash that off and start looking forward to the next season? Um, for me especially, I don't know. I was in my room for, like, a week. Like, just straight, like, in my room. Like, my brothers, could, like, they could talk to me, but it's like I didn't really want to deal with anybody. I didn't want to, like, talk or... 
I, like, I just, it was, it was kind of tough, you know? Now, I want to ask you specifically about this play that I've mentioned twice. <laughs> LeBron James. What was the huddle like? What did, did, did Dwayne Casey not say, yeah, he's fine. Let this motherfucker drive Let all the way Let him dribble the fucking ball up the court. And then he might miss. <laughs> did no one mention, like, clotheslining this cocksucker? Like, knocking this Word. motherfucker down? Yeah. Did that come up? Did That's no right. one say anything about, like, listen, if he gets ahead of steam, right. fucking just tackle him. Yeah. You'd make be him make the free tackle him. Did that come up in the huddle? Because I haven't been able to find the tape. Of, of that huddle. But I, I believe, listen, it sucks for Dwayne Casey to get fired. It sucks for any, what, what the fuck? I mean, you don't feel bad for him. The motherfucker got hired by Detroit. And he got coach of the year for that. Yeah, he's fine. <laughs> but what do you remember about that play? Like that huddle? Without throwing anybody under the bus, I'll do that for you. <laughs> uh, I'm, to be honest with you, like I can't really remember it for, for real. <laughs> yeah, you see? <laughs> <laughs> It was all fuzzy. Hey, I'm, I'm gonna be honest. That's, like, P, that's called PLSD. <laughs> that's post LeBron yeah. stress disorder. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's out of the East. I, I don't even want to remember that play, so. Um, okay. So, so this summertime, you guys had some moves. Um, DeMar DeRozan, what did he mean to the Raptors? What was it like being a teammate of DeMar DeRozan? And where were you? Like, you're, you're 24, mm -hmm. you're a young kid. Like, you guys are finding things out on like, social media, yeah. phone calls. So talk about DeMar DeRozan, what made him so special, what he was like as a teammate, what his lasting legacy to these fans and the rest of the Raptors fans will be, and when right. and how you found out that he got traded. Um, first of all, I mean, like, I think DeMar is like one of the coolest dude ever, like, I've been around, you know, just, like, just a chill dude, like, just so cool and down to earth. Like, Do you think he was cool that day? I mean, he, I don't know. I don't know. But for me, I, I, think he's, I think he's a Toronto legend for sure. You know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. Just, for sure. Um, just, you know, what he's been able to do, you know, in Toronto and put the city on the map, you know. Right. And, and you know, I mean, I was in college, you know, I, I, I didn't really watch Toronto, you know what I'm saying? But the, the first thing I knew about Toronto was DeMar, DeMar DeRozan. So, right. like, I think he's a legend, and uh, he put the city on the map, the, the country on the map. And, right. And, um, you know, I just think, you know, he, he deserves to be celebrated. I agree. Yeah. No doubt. So where, like, as a, as a, as a player, you know, and on your 24 year, you know, it's like, there's like this, you know, super duper elite crew of guys, you know, we, we know who they are, we've talked about them, you know, and then there's like your players, and you know, even like, you know, like the, one of the things that was the strife about the DeMar thing is he seemed to be caught off guard. Where were you when you found, how, did you find out about it on Twitter, on social media? Yeah, I did, like, like everyone else. <laughs> and are you like, what the fuck, fake yeah, news? Yeah. I mean, I was like, I, you know, I started checking, you know, texting some of the coaches, trying to figure out like what was going on, and you know, yeah, I was surprised for sure. Um, okay. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. You shut the fuck up. Think he could just blow you it shut in. the fuck up, you. I'm up here with shorts on and black fucking socks. I'm the only one who should be complaining. You think I planned? I had a fucking shirt that I bought in Miami Beach. I'm doing a show in Toronto in black socks and fucking shorts. Yeah. I got cuts on my legs from doing the fucking bushes last week, and you're fucking talking, you fuck? Yeah. 48 years old. Number one podcast in the world. I'm up here in a fucking show. Yeah. Short time. Hey, 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 hey. That's right. Money, don't Fuck. be talking, man. This is embarrassing. We I got here. a partner wearing a fucking soccer jersey. <laughs> fucking got to get in. Hey, man. Soccer. Don't disrespect soccer, man. Uh, soccer, all soccer day, man. man. I'm with all that soccer yeah, shit. Yeah, I'm, I'm with all that, too. Yeah. yeah. Do you know? Okay, so <laughs> your career, like, give the, the, the bullet points. When did you start playing basketball? Um, I started playing basketball when I was like 14, 15. Okay, and, wow. but you grew up playing soccer? Yes, like my whole life. In? In Cameroon. Okay, now, in Cameroon, I always, when I travel, the first thing I do, if I have my clothes, you know, make it through TSA, <laughs> and my belongings, the, no bullshit. The first thing I do when I get to a hotel is I say, where's the Starbucks? Even if I don't want a Starbucks, to try to give me a gist of where the fuck I am <laughs> in the world. In Cameroon, if I landed in Cameroon with my bags, where, if I said, where's the fucking Starbucks, would I be ass out? Yeah. Okay. Nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No Starbucks in uh -uh. Cameroon. So, so we're growing up there and like playing in the NBA now, 
When did that become something that was even like something that even crossed your mind? Um, I went to, uh, to a basketball camp in South Africa. Um, it's called Basketball Without Borders. Right. And um, actually, I'm supposed to go back there for the first time, you know, since I was like in the, in the camp. So, um, yeah, so I went there. There was a lot of NBA players like Serge Ibaka, um, I don't know, Tabo Sefolosha, uh, Lior Deng. And, you know, it was just a really cool experience and just being around NBA players and, and seeing, you know, that they were so, like, you know, they were normal, you know. Like, as, you know, as a kid from Cameroon, you know, we watched them on TV and it's, like, such a big deal. And um, for me, just seeing them and being around them just made me, you know, want to be like them. So. And, but when did it start to become, like, something that you were, like, um, set your eyes on? Uh, sophomore year, like, well, freshman year in college. And you went to New Mexico? New Mexico State, yeah. And how did you wind up going from... Cameroon to New Mexico State, like, like how, did, how does that happen? Because it seems so far away. Obviously, you know, it, it, there's so much social media and, the, the, you know, every, you could see things. But, like, how do you wind up getting to New Mexico State? Um, I have three brothers, and they all play basketball, before, you know. And, Are any uh, of them good? Because I saw them backstage, and they, they look like they like, haven't played in a while. They, they, look well, like, <laughs> they look like football motherfuckers. Yeah, they look like, they look like they're at Starbucks, like, in the muffin section. Yeah, they look like... I'm not, I'm not going to bullshit now. I'm not going to go backstage because they're big motherfuckers. But they look like they know exactly where the fucking Starbucks is at. They look and like, they're not there for the coffee. Hell yeah. They're for the fucking egg sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen his brothers? It's Holy big, shit. That's a big Get motherfucker. fucking come out of here. Got... Just come on out of here. Let him fight. Come on, man. Come on. <laughs> Look, we motherfucking play for the Giants. Yeah. <laughs> Try to act. <laughs> you know where the fucking Starbucks is at. Hell yeah. Uh, thank you, you guys. <laughs> yeah. hey. So that jump, how does that become like, uh, like you get from Cameroon to New Mexico State, and then, like, how does that even happen? Um, I mean, I think... For me, there's no just, AAU in Cameroon, yeah, right? Yeah, there's no. I didn't play AAU or anything like that. But um, I think for my freshman year, because I wasn't supposed to play first of all, like my freshman year, I think someone got injured, and then I started, and then you know, like I, I don't know, it was just fun. And then once I kind of realized, like I was like, I'm I'm pretty good, you know. <laughs> I started realizing that, and I was like, okay, maybe I'll I'll try it. And then and then when did you start zeroing in, like? NBA, like where, um, well, I, well, let me ask you this, before you played in the NBA, when was the first time, because you know, you, a lot of times college guys will be at a gym or their yeah. special workouts, mm -hmm. when's the first time before you played in the NBA that you played, that you remember playing against NBA players, and do you remember who that was? Um, it was during pre-draft, like. <laughs> so you didn't have any of this, like you weren't at UCLA, like, yo, I'm working out. Uh, no, nah, I was at UCLA before, like during pre-draft, like before I was drafted, and I played against like. Maybe a couple of NBA players like Chris Copeland, like all the time. And, Who used um, to play for the Knicks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chris Copeland uh, and um, yeah, guys like that. I think he's actually working at Starbucks now. Yeah. Hey, come on, man, watch out, man. <laughs> That's my man. That's my man. Yeah. He's still in the league. He in the league? No, no, he's uh, not in the league right he now. He may be right, motherfucker. <laughs> Damn, watch out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you know, like, this, the, the I Am Rapport Stereo podcast, uh, we're known for our trash talking. Are you a shit no talker? Idea. Me? Sometimes, yeah. but, like, nah. You speak French, right? I do. Oh, I would do it in French. <laughs> yeah, I would talk shit in French. French. Yeah, I think it's funny. I'll be like, how do, you say, how do you say you ain't shit, motherfucker, in French? Yeah. Like, if, I, if you were going to say that in a court, like, yo, you ain't shit, motherfucker. Like, if you were playing against old-ass Tony Parker... Like, and you want to, yeah. fucking Tony fucking Parker. Hit him some slang. Fuck him, man. Slang he was, he shitted on guy, your guy Kawhi. I loved him. He was great. But if you were... <laughs> <laughs> slang, kick some slang shit to uh, Tony Parker. How do I say you ain't shit, motherfucker, in French? I, I, I can't They said you were that. fluent in French. I, yeah. I, can't, I can't translate that. Like, I can't really say, like... Yeah, yeah, Oh, okay. That was, that, that was well, nice. That was good. Hey, hey, hey. hey. What did you say? Say it, G. Say, wait, say it again. Enculé. J. Oh, can't. What? Say it enculé. I'm African too, motherfucker. <laughs> From where? Brooklyn. 
That was good, that was good, that was good. That was good. <laughs> so your new coach, what is his name? Coach Nurse. Nick Nurse, yeah. Nick Nurse. Yes. Coach Nurse. That's his name. Oh, shit. This is going to be a terrible season. <laughs> hey, yo. <laughs> Damn, why? Don't know. Don't make eye contact with yeah, these animals. Yeah, don't fuck with these motherfuckers. Who, who said he's a bum? Oh, Affliction? You said it? Nah, money got our shirt got on, man. Shirt. Don't fuck with oh, him. Yeah. He bought a shirt. He's yeah. a bum. Yeah, you got... <laughs> Sit your ass back down. <laughs> All right, so the Raptors this year, going into next year. The East is open. That fucking cinder block from Cleveland, he's gone. I mean... We, 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 want, we want them to suffer, you yeah, Cleveland. I mean, they're, yeah. they're, they, you know, Kevin Love, that's my guy. They're not making the playoffs. My man Channing. They brought him back? They brought him back. Oh, shit. And they, they were proud of it. <laughs> <laughs> like they made an announcement about this motherfucker. They should have brought my man Copeland back. Yeah. <laughs> Word. Get him out right. of Walmart. T talk to your fans. <laughs> That's crazy, man. That's crazy. We having a good time. He's out there with Vin Baker and shit. <laughs> Whoa. All right, so next season, what can we expect for the Raptors? Because the East is wide open. You obviously got Kawhi. Do you, by the way, do you know a guy up here, who, like a guy or a girl or a shop where he could get his shit hooked up? Yeah. Because one thing about Kawhi Leonard, like, yo, sometimes I'm like, you know you're on TV, motherfucker. Yeah. Like, hook your, like, hook all your shit up. All over the world. That shit is all over, man. There's cameras. That's the style. That's the style. Oh, oh nah, man. Okay. You, but, you gotta hook them up. But, but, <laughs> but going into next season, what can the fans, what can the Toronto Raptors fan is, expect from your team? What are you excited about? <laughs> you sound like Jarvis Landry. Jarvis Landry, the football player. What Talking about the Cleveland Browns could be in the Super Bowl. What the fuck do you know about? He said that? Yeah. Oh, because he was high. He had to be. They didn't win a game last year. This motherfucker they won one game the year before that. Come on, man. But what are you excited about the Raptors? Um, I'm excited, you know. Um, I mean, obviously, we still have, like, most of the team back, you know, the bench mob, you know, did. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You know, we got the bench mob back. You know, we, we still we got Kyle, we got Kawhi, which is who was a great player when you know he was healthy. Yeah. And you know, um, we got you know new coach, and you know, we're just excited. You know, I think it's, it's a little change, and, and um, we're excited about the future for sure. What's the rest of your summer like? You're going you're going to participate as a, a counselor, as a professional. Yes, yes, yes. On Sat I'm going on Saturday. How long is the flight? I heard it was like 16 hours. Shit. Jeez. Okay. Are we on the PJ or what are we on? The PJ first class? Are we I in the wish. We're not in the fucking PJ? Nah, we ain't. Hey, you gotta win a playoff yet. series to get in the private jet, <laughs> man. We, we gotta get paid. I'm gonna I'm tell you what I know. What do you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, so you're going there and then what, what is the rest of the summer after that? The um, rest of the summer, I think I'm gonna be back in LA. Uh, that's where I train at most of the time. So okay. We okay. got the UCLA runs. Shout okay. Out my man Rico. Okay. You know, and um, yeah. I'll be there until I have to report back to Toronto. And then when do you start back for, 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 uh, for training camp? Uh, well, we have to report back in Toronto September, I think, 5th or something. And when, when you say report back, are, are you expected as a pro to, to show up? Because like, like, in the 70s and the 80s, like training camp, guys were smoking cigarettes and shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, they, like, and then they get in shape. When you, when you show up to training camp, are you expected at this point to be in shape? Yeah, for sure. Like wow. game ready? Yes. Because like, how long is the training camp? Oh, usually like five days, six days. Maybe. And then you start games. Well, yeah, preseason games, yeah. And after wow. five oh. or six days. Yes. All right. Well, wow. listen. <laughs> Shit. No, I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, it's, it's <laughs> NBA is real. It's real. It's a goddamn shame. You know, you could have at least brought me some jeans, man. <laughs> I didn't know you were going to have shorts. Um, Ka Kawhi listen. got some shit for you. I'm going to leave my man alone. <laughs> Um, all right, listen, Pias Pascal Siak. Damn. Damn. You were doing so good, bro. <laughs> let, let, let the crowd do it. Let the crowd Pascal do it. Pascal Siakam. Hey. Pascal Siakam. 
I wish you nothing but luck going this, see, this season. In the rest of your career, stay healthy. Yep. Have a safe flight to Cameroon. I, uh, I appreciate you rocking on the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast. Word up. Okay. And uh, enjoy the rest of your summer. Yes. We're going to take a short intermission mission, which we have to take. Then we're going to come back out. We're going to be with Bubbles. We're going to answer some questions. And we have the sick fucks of the week. So get yeah. a little drink. We'll be right back. No doubt. Listen, I use these pills, okay? Guys, if you're looking to last longer and go a few extra rounds in the bedroom, Blue Chew is a performance enhancement for the bedroom that we've all been waiting for. It's the pill that will certifiably make your fuck style buck wild. Blue Chew has the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, so they work. Plus, Blue Chew is a lot cheaper. And since they're chewable, they work a lot faster than a pill. This is the first chewable pill made for the loaf. All loafs matter. Never forget that. Listen, this isn't something to be embarrassed about. These are confidence pills and make you go 15 rounds in the bedroom. If sex was an Olympic sport, Blue Chew would be banned, okay? It would be banned. And most importantly, you do not need to go to a doctor's office, spend time waiting in line at a pharmacy, because Blue Chew ships straight to your door in discreet packaging. It's on the low, okay? Here's a great deal for you guys or girls that want to surprise your guys, huh? Visit BlueChew.com and get your first shipment free when you use the promo code LOAF, L-O-A-F. Just pay the $5 shipping, that's Blue. Chew.com, B L U E C H E W.com, the promo code LOAF for certified guaranteed sugar dicking. All right? Bluechew.com, promo code is LOAF. Try it. I do. All right, is that, can we get going here? Yeah, they in. Everybody in. All right, everybody's in here. Captain Colitis. <laughs> Captain Colitis. <laughs> Has there been any cereal poopers in Canada? Nah, they're civilized out here, man. They go to the fucking bathroom, man. Nobody's in the middle of the fucking road. Disrobing and defecating. All right. <laughs> now, this was a last minute guest to a jam packed special Toronto show. And even my brother, Professor Rappaport, in Halifax was jealous he couldn't make it. P.E. Uh, this guy's got a, you know, a sort of prickly personality. Um, he's one of a kind. He's a Canadian icon, a worldwide icon. Let's bring the stage right now. My guy, Bubbles. Come on, you. Bubbles in the place. Come on, Bubbles. Bubbles. Yes, sir. Jack one, two, there we go. What's going on? How you doing? How you doing What's going friend? on, Toronto? Yeah. Yes, sir. Very excited to be here. They're excited or you're excited? I'm excited. My bird is doing that. <laughs> How you feeling, man? I'm operating at 100%. Now, listen. I'm gonna, I want to get something clear right now. Yeah. You're, you're a cat guy. Oh, yes, I am. Big time cat guy. <laughs> now, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I, I want to be transparent. Do you know what that means, Bubbles? Oh, yes. Okay, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't like fucking cats. Oh, Jesus, Murphy. Jesus here Murphy. we fucking go. I, I will flip this fucking table right here. <laughs> what do you mean you don't like cats? I don't trust the little bastards. Well, that's because you don't know how to fucking deal with them, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> They're the most trustworthy things you can, you can have. What, do you fucking have a dog? You think you can trust that fucking thing? <laughs> he will fucking bite you quicker than you can look at him. Now, are you cat biased or do you like dogs too but just prefer cats more? Well, I used to have a big problem with dogs, but I must admit, Rick, you got a dog. 
little while ago named Cool Now, and I was kind of, I kind of did like him because he had cute little face on him. Yeah. So Ricky I, got one? I can deal with dogs if I have to, but if you, if I got a pack, it's fucking kitties, 100%. Uh, now, Ricky and Julian, where are those two fucking guys now? I don't fucking know. I tried to get Ricky here, and he was passed out, covered in pissed. So I couldn't bring him and Julian. I don't know where he was. He was at the strip club. Ooh. Are those guys, are, those, are, they, are they hard to, like, wrangle together? Oh, it's almost impossible to get them to do anything. Ricky's so high all the time, he doesn't know where the fuck he is. Give it up for Bubbles. You gotta get the crowd hyped. You gotta get them hyped. When I say rapper, you say porn. Rapper. Porn. Rapper. Oh. See that shit? Yeah, he get it hyped. Bubbles was, getting shit hyped. That was pretty decent. That's right, bitch. Wait, was that, that was pretty good. When I say bubbles, you say bubbles. 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 Well, that's kind of fucked because they're just repeating the same word. <laughs> you gotta try to break it up somehow. <laughs> <laughs> now listen, you've traveled the world. Yes, I have. <laughs> Who in the bubbles. fuck was that? Yeah, what? bubbles, get him. Bubbles, I, 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 I try to, I try not. Now making eye contact with you is tough, but making eye contact with the crowd is 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 because <laughs> once you give them a little bit, they they go crazy with the shit. Yeah. Gary Laser Eyes, see that? He's referring to specific kitties that I own. <laughs> Gary Laser Eyes got crabs, actually. Damn. Ha ha One of my kitties got crabs. How'd he get it? How? Well, I opened a Kittyland Love Center, and I opened a, like a bubble shed and breakfast, and then Steve Rogers, the local news guy, was in there banging prostitutes. And <laughs> <laughs> my kitties got crabs. It's fucking bullshit. How do you deal with this politically correct climate that we're in? Now, I don't know how in Canada what it's like, but in America, every single thing we say, everything, you got a real a potty mouth. How do you deal with I this? I do. You got a fucking potty mouth. Holy bubbles. fuck, you're out here dropping f bombs <laughs> like they're going out of fucking style, which I think is, you know, I quite enjoy it myself. But, I mean, that's just the way we, t everybody in Canada talks that way, don't we? Yeah. I planted him. I planted him in the crowd. That guy. That's my man, Suds. <laughs> now, you've traveled the world. Yes, a little bit. We went to Australia, and I've been to Japan. Have you been to Japan? I haven't been. God damn it, man. I was in Japan with Guns N' Roses. That's why I was in there playing songs with Guns N' Roses. Damn. How'd that work out for you? It was fantastic. There's a lot of Asian ladies in Japan. In Japan? A lot. <laughs> now, would you be comfortable if we took a couple of specific questions from the fans? Yes, absolutely. Can you see out there? Can you see what's going on? I don't mean no disrespect. I can fucking see just as good as you okay. can, bud. Okay. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to monitor this. Um, stand up, you, right there, and then don't get crazy. I'll try to do, speak loud. Loud. Yeah, I have two cats. Bubbles, do you know that this is the cat killer himself? Oh. Whoa. That what? is not true, Bubbles. What the fuck? That's a falsehood. <laughs> not true, Bubbles. Not true. I can I'm attest to you, that. I will flip this fucking table. <laughs> it's not true. I love cats. From afar. My mother has cats. I don't like them. I don't speak to them, but I would never harm a cat. Well, now, listen, you fuck. That's not a question. That's called dry snitching. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, question. Stand up and just speak loud. Hey, Bubbles, what's your favorite hockey team? Aw, uh, now, why would you fucking ask that? <laughs> I'm in Toronto. What do you think I'm going to say, bud? The fucking Leafs, obviously. <laughs> Maple Leaf. But I got to qualify that with, I am a fucking bit of a Wayne Gretzky disciple, so I cannot badmouth the Edmonton Oilers. Okay? Let's just qualify that right now. Now, as a uh, you know, person from the States, we don't really understand, like, the, the, the roots, 
of, of hockey the way you guys do. Wayne Gretzky and the Edmonton Oilers, Toronto Maple Leafs. Can you sort of explain that to me in, in layman terms, Bubble? Wayne Gretzky and the Edmonton Oilers had a fucking dynasty from 1985 on. They fucking won the cup. They were unstoppable. Wayne Gretzky, Paul Coffey, Gary Curry, Mark Messier. Are you fucking kidding me? Damn. That was one of the greatest dynasties in the history of sports. Wayne. He had a fucking cartoon with Michael Jordan. Wayne Gretzky, the Michael Jordan of hockey, no, right? No, I, I get that. cartoon. I, Wayne Gretzky, Michael Jordan, and I forget who else was in the... Bo Jackson, yeah. that's right. Bo Jackson, Wayne Gretzky, and Michael Jordan had a fucking cartoon. All right, all right. Ask Money, okay. money with the shirt right here. Brenda, hold on, hold on. Stand up, stand up. Ask loud, please. Hey, Bubbles, how was it playing basketball against Dennis Rodman? Oh, that was fucked up. <laughs> Let me tell you, I got, to, I got to play against Dennis Rodman. He's a bit of an odd bird, I gotta say. Did, did he cry at any, at any point during the game? Because every no. time I see this fucking guy, he's crying. No, he didn't cry. <laughs> he didn't cry. when We were in this gigantic thing that had like six full-size basketball courts. He walks in with two fucking Rottweilers and just lets them go. Right away, there's people playing games and the dogs just start fucking running through games and people are diving for their lives. <laughs> it was unbelievable. And he had fucking metal fingernails. He had metal fingernails, big long ones. <laughs> it was freaking me out. When you played, did that, did it interfere with you at all? Well, no, I mean, I never, I'm not, you know, clearly not that basketball inclined. I'm not tall or right. anything. And I thought I might be able to Take him out, but he's quite good. He's good, huh? He's, good. he's pretty good, yeah. Okay. Stand up question. Hey, Bubbles, I want you to rank the top three idiots. Rank the top three idiots? Jacob, Corey, or Trevor? Top three. Yeah. One, two, three. Well, listen, bud, I'll tell you right now. You might not want to badmouth Corey because he's here tonight and he'll fucking punch you right in the mouth. You think Corey'd want to come out for a second? Corey's here. I saw him earlier. How about this? How about you take a big hydraulic sock on my nuts? How about that? Oh. Bubbles, I was hear that you. Too, was that too much? No, no, I like that. Kick that shit, Bubbles. All right, well, Bubbles, do you got anything planned for tonight? Your night out in Toronto. Your big, big night for Bubbles out in Toronto. I was thinking maybe you and me hit the clubs. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yes, but can you, can you hook me up? You got any juice at the clubs out here? I've got, you know, I've got some ins. Okay. As they say in the All biz. Right. I got some connects. All right. Yes, sir. I'll be damn. What about Moody? Can you get him in also? Yes, sir. Yes. Fucking right. All right. Well, listen, I appreciate, I know the fans, I know Canada appreciates, particularly Toronto appreciates you coming to yes. rock with us. Let's give it up one more time for my Bubbles. man Bubbles. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me, guys. Absolutely. Can you make it off the stage here? When buddy? I say rapper, you say poor. Rapper. Poor. Rapper. Poor. I like it. Yo, I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast tour is real. It's real. The I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast world tour is real. Saturday, August 4th in New York City, Saturday, August 18th in Houston, Texas, Wednesday, August 22nd in fucking Philadelphia, Pennsylvania at Union Transfer. I cannot wait to play Philly. And Saturday, the 25th of August in Boston, Massachusetts. We're coming out there, Brady. August 25th, I Am Rappaport Tour. You could get tickets, www.iamrappaporttour.com. Come see me G. Moody, and you know we're always going to have special guests all summer long. I am RappaportTour.com. What's good, yo? Speaking of sick fucks of the week. Yeah, let's jump into a few. That's the sick fuck of the week soundtrack. Deep song. 
It's an award that is earned, not given. It is an award that is earned, not given. If you never listen to the Iron Rap Poor Stereo podcast, you'll know that not anybody can get anointed a sick fuck of the week. It goes out to a people with a certain. <laughs> and we got some buttes for you today. Speaking of sick fucks of the week, Larry Nasser. Does the name ring bells? This piece of shit, we don't, we, we, he's complaining, this guy who, who, who assaulted, did terrible things for terrible amounts of time. He's got a lawyer who is the sick fuck of the week because he's trying to get less time on the 300 year prison time saying that Larry Nassar's judge was biased. That's when a judge is supposed to be biased, you piece of shit, you. Oh, he doesn't get a Wonder Bread bag. Yeah. He gets a little spit and some sandpaper. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. All right. This first sick fuck of the week is a real, like, slow pitch. In Thailand, a Thai man Go cut ahead. off. <laughs> His best friend's penis. How he get near this motherfucker to do that? You couldn't come near me and say... <laughs> with that intention. In a drunken fit, after one friend tried to seduce the other friend, tried to, to seduce his wife, but bad enough that he cut off his best... He called him... It was his best friend. Bad enough that he cut off his best friend's loaf. He then took the loaf and fed it to his dog. What, what a friend. I, he could at least gave it. After you cut it, at least give it back. Lesson learned. Right, like, yo, 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 that's you when you said, it. you got it, dude. You got it. Just give it back. We good. I fucked up. Don't give it. Don't have someone eat it. <laughs> We're cool. I, I made a mistake. Right. They can reattach it, but the dog is digesting it now. That's fucked up, yo. That's terrible. In... <laughs> yeah. That's the humidity out there. It fucks you up, yo. I'm telling you, I was just down there, and I have compassion for those sick fucks down yeah. there. You go nuts in that heat. Yeah. You get swamp ass, you get an infection, and then you become a sick fuck. Yeah. I mean, it is a vicious cycle down there. You literally have no idea about heat and humidity until you spend some time in Florida, and then it all makes sense. Right. Hell yeah. The bath salts are an attempted escape. <laughs> Next thing you know, you're eating people's faces naked. <laughs> Butt ass naked. In Volusia, Florida, Volusia County. And you know shit's fucked up when you're in Toronto and they're laughing at you. <laughs> Fucking playing, playing. Fucking love it up here. Toronto Film Festival. I was actually up here at Toronto Film Festival, uh, 94, 95, Miramax. Harvey Weinstein bought me a leather jacket. Oh, you mean a condom? <laughs> hey, give him the hump. <laughs> oh, <laughs> word. You stepped in that quicksand, bro. In Volusia, Florida. <laughs> this, now listen, I'm a dog person. I don't like cats. You know about my trials and tribulations with the cats. It's all true. I, it, it's all real. I don't like them. I don't trust them. I don't give a shit what Bubble says. <laughs> <clears throat> a guy was caught on video 
throwing kittens out of the window of his moving car. This piece of shit is on the loose in Volusia County, Florida. Keep your eyes open and your head on a swivel. Little kittens, god damn. These motherfuckers you can have in your hand like this. This motherfucker. No. Savage. The unfriendly skies. This time it wasn't the passengers. People want to bring these dogs on the planes. They don't have control of their dogs. This is a real story. A scared dog, who, like a military dog, went batshit crazy on a plane, <laughs> opening luggage compartments mid-flight. How, how does that happen? A dog? <laughs> wait, wait, the shit up, up top? Yeah, probably like the low ones. It can't jump up there. Because you know what I'd do. If I saw a fucking dog acting nuts on a plane, fucking with the handles, I'd take that fucker down. You gotta tackle him. Yeah. They let that shit happen up there? It was so out of control, the dog, they had to make an emergency landing. Because imagine that shit. The pilots, I, I, would, I would go, yo, don't land this Put shit. Put that fucking dog in the bathroom. He'll, we'll, we'll be all right. Yeah. We're Lock not landing this plane in Cleveland. Fuck no, that. I got to make a fucking destination. Don't land this shit, man. We got a gig at the, at the music hall in Toronto. We're not yeah. landing the plane. Yeah. Let, let me... <laughs> Finally, <laughs> there are more from Florida. Humidity, but man. I, I feel like I'm, I'm like I'm like I like you know like I'm being a bias towards Florida, like I'm discriminating. I'm gonna skip that guy. This was in Nashville. You said it. A sick fuck named Brody Tyler Young. That's the name of a sick fuck. If you're in Nashville and you got three names that could all be first names. Brody Tyler Young from Nashville. Uh oh. Red flag, this guy. Yeah. Oh, you never saw Brody Tyler Young? Oh, look him up. He looks like. Uh. <laughs> he was found locked in the bathroom stall of a McDonald's, butt ass naked, doing jumping jacks. They, that's a safe space? Oh, yeah. That's the new thing now. You could get naked in, 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 in the bathroom. Not a problem. The motherfucker who was working out in that gym and he got naked, remember him? In the gym. He said it was a safe space. He said it was a non-judgment zone. <laughs> but, but not to do downward dog with your ass in the air. I'm gonna judge you as a sick fuck. Yeah. If I'm in the gym, it's not, you wanna do a yoga class, great. You wanna wear a banana hammock, fine. You even want to wear an old school jock strap? Okay. But to be butt ass in the yoga class? Why? We're locking you up. Yeah. And we're going to kick you in your ass on the way out. <laughs> <laughs> the Happy Meal. That's good, man. <laughs> All right. Talked a lot of shit. You Canadian cocksuckers. <laughs> you hockey playing motherfuckers. <laughs> I'll take my fucking hockey stick and bust your fucking head. You can't control your fucking dog on the fucking plane. <laughs> if you got any questions for me or Moody, in the back, long hand. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. By the yeah. way, before you answer that question, just just to just to put a period exclamation point on it. Don't start. Did G Moody dunk the basketball? <laughs> what? <laughs> the customers are always right. All right. So I'm gonna do it again, y'all. That's it. That all. <laughs> that all. <laughs> Okay, what I'm gonna do is, we're gonna line up quick because they'll kick us out and I do not want to do uh, the meet and greet and pictures on the street. We're gonna do it quick, civilized. We'll do it with everybody. 
formally, uh, you know, in a you know, formal way, because I can't tell you how much we appreciate performing for you guys. Yes, absolutely. All right, you with a beard. Thank you. Two questions. Two Quick. Questions. Two. Uh, are you going to be in the Stern Show Fantasy Football game? Yes. Yeah. Are you going to play Rasan in the one-on-one basketball game? Yes. And I'll be on a uh, wrap-up show Monday. Right. Uh, one more in the back. Right here. It's that tweet of Eli's last year. Are you going to be happy? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's going on with White Famous? Unfortunately, the show White Famous, which I love doing, got caught up in the politics of show business and they canceled it. Listen, I don't want to get, I don't want to, I want to make sure I, I hand everybody uh, tickets for the big three tomorrow. Um, well, I'm going to have you guys come this way and this way. We're going to meet and greet before they kick us out, right? Where do we do it, Miles? Jordan? What? Towards the lobby? Yo, it's our pleasure to do what we want it. We don't want to get kicked out, so we, we'll do it quick. I'll meet you guys up there. Don't, don't worry, don't rush, don't push, don't shove. We'll see you up there in two minutes. Peace.